volunteering for your local sports team, kindergarten or environmental group can be really rewarding. It's a great way to give back to your community and support a kaupapa you're passionate about. But the roles can be complex, especially if you're appointed or elected chair. This video is one of a series of four that aims to help you step up and support the team. Or if you're thinking about becoming a chair, get you well prepared for your new role. These videos are part of the National Action Plan for Community Governance. The plan was created by community leaders to create resources to support you in your board roles. This third video is all about your role in helping your board be strategic and develop a great strategy. A common problem of many boards is that they're stuck in the weeds, trapped in the operational detail of their organisation. This is because boards and committees often wear two hats, governance and management. Doing the governing and doing the doing of the organisation. Without thinking strategically and having a great strategic plan, many organisations flounder on a hamster wheel of busyness, not making the impact they want. So how do you lead your board strategically? So let's get started asking some experienced board chairs all about chairing the board. So as chair, how do you make sure your board is strategic? What I find is people, they come from the ground up and they end up in the governance role. So it's a real shift, paradigm shift for people to think strategically and look at the big picture. What I have found that works is having a really clear agenda that keeps their focus on strategic discussions. Not so much the administration and ticking things off. That's nice to do, that can be five minutes at the end. But really creating the culture where people are used to looking at big picture, used to thinking strategically, and sometimes it's about putting the right documents and information in front of people to help prepare them for that level of conversation as well. For me, to keep us strategic, we try and keep our main goals in front of us. Uh, we keep revisiting it when we have our meetings together. Um, and then we also weave that across into our uh, WIPs, which are our work in progress meetings, so that the team are aware and they keep those goals front of mind as well. I think a really important feature of keeping a board strategic is to make sure they have a very clear sense of the purpose and the mission and why they're there. And different organisations have different purposes and it's really important for the boards to have a clear idea about what the purpose of the organisation is. Having a good chair is really, really important to facilitate that process as well. So keep, keep our eyes up and keep our focus straight. And how do you develop a great strategy? We'll try and bounce some ideas around together, we'll have a jam, we'll call it all, uh, we'll debate, we'll discuss, and then basically it's kind of like you throw mud at the wall and you figure out what's going to stick. So whatever's going to stick is the part that we're going to test. So once we've kind of got ourselves um, some core fundamentals, then we'll put that out for broader discussion among our team, um, our partners, and anyone else that's supporting us to get to where we need to go. The way to develop an effective strategy is to make use of the knowledge of the board members. The reason people are on a board is that they're bringing a set of skills and knowledge to the table and the chair's job is to harness that and to be able to bring it together into a shared mission and purpose and to be able to articulate it as a group as to what it is that we're trying to achieve. So I think collectively you'd look around the board table and identify, do we have strategic thinkers here? Do we have people who have experience in developing strategy, strategic plans? And if you don't get someone who does, I really value having an independent person. And you know, like, buy, try before you buy. So you shop around and you find people who, they really have an art, I call it for weaving, where they can listen to people and then articulate that and write the plan for you. But it's also really important that we are always clear before we sit around the table what is our purpose and what are we trying to achieve and what is it that we can focus on, what's in scope and what is not in scope. So ensuring that we're always staying focused on our end goal, we're always staying focused on what is it we are trying to achieve as a board because we're trying to steer the waka in a direction um, but we also have to have trust that our team are going to carry us forward, they're the ones that are going to be rowing us towards where we need to go. So we have to have trust. We're just setting the direction, making sure that um, we're clear. We also help clear um, any obstacles out of the way. Um, and then we've just got to let the crew do their mahi. And that's, um, that's what we've found to be successful so far. Let's also ask someone who has worked with many boards about how she has seen boards do this successfully. 
So how can CHEERS support their boards to be strategic? Mm, great question. At, at all times, making sure that they are thinking about the future, not about the current or the past. Having a strategy that is outcomes focused, so not focused on the doing bits, but on where the board, where the chair wants the board to go and what time frame and how they might state that and measure it. And then making sure that directors around the board table, board members, are focusing on the governance conversations in the context of that strategy, not the operational discussions. Where can strategies go wrong? The most important area that the board's strategies can go wrong is that they are set far too visionary in a really big context that is almost intergenerational. Mm. So big on vision, a lot less clear on specifics about what they're going to do, by when and how. And I think if they get that right, or if they get that wrong, the chief executive then is at a loss really to know how to focus. So what are some of the biggest obstacles to strategies and how can boards ensure that the strategies that, or the endpoints that they desire actually, and their strategies actually get enacted on the ground? There's some prep work that boards should do long before they start implementing anything via the chief executive. Um, and there are a range of ways they can do it, but they should definitely have an environmental scan. What's out there that is either an opportunity or a risk that we could position ourselves into or remove ourselves from? What are our most important stakeholders hearing and saying to us mm -hmm. about how we're performing now and where the gaps might be? How, I, how might we write that up and test it before we roll it out? And what are the things that we have to think about that might constrain our ability to deliver the strategy? So generally speaking, people and money mm. and time. So is that quite a lot about keeping those strategic goals um, in mind with the perspective of stakeholders? If you do it at the right time, you get and you provide them with the right context, you get really uh, insightful, deep stakeholder uh, feedback. If you go out to a large group of stakeholders before providing them with any context, you can end up with a long list or a wish list of things that, is, that are impossible to deliver on, but you've almost, you've asked. So now you're having to kind of backtrack. Mm. So in my view and in our experience coaching boards, the board does its thinking first and gets really clear about where it wants to go on behalf of its owners and its stakeholders and then tests that before locking it in. That's what I would recommend. Not only do chairs have to lead strategically, they also have a key outward facing role as spokesperson, media commentator and engaging with key stakeholders, all as a busy volunteer. How do you do all this and do it well? So how do you go about managing the outward facing part of your role? So acting as a spokesperson for your stakeholders and for your organisation? Well, you've got, you've got to be prepared to front and there's a courage in that. I mean, even making this video is a chair fronting as part of the job. And um, some people hate that, some people like it. But you know, it also it's important to remain humble and not, not turn it into some massive ego trip. I mean, the, the fundamental thing about the chair is that you're a, a sort of elected by the other board members and they have chosen you because they're happy to have you taking a leadership role. But you need to earn that and you need to continue to earn it all the time. Especially dealing with media, we have a saying, what would that look like on the six o'clock news basically? That's the test for our accountability. So anything, any decision that's made is often tested through what would that look like on the six o'clock news? Because many of us are funded by taxpayers, we're government funded, we're non-profit organisations, so we have to be really diligent about our decision making and transparency and outward perception. We might think it was a great idea and decision, but what does it look like from the outside? We often talk a lot about what our key messages are, so it's not waiting until something happens, it's actually being prepared before then. And having key statements, we need to have the same language around the board table, that's really important. Um, and that, that you have a um, capability to be able to whip that up really quickly. 
the media turnaround's real fast, so you don't have long to be able to get your key messages out. So I think it's really important that you're clear about what the media are requiring of you. And often I'll ask them, I'd like to know where is this information going, who is the audience, and I want to see it before it goes live. I think that's really important that you make sure that you see it um, as often as possible um, prior to anything going public. Um, the other part that I tend to do is I like to just socialise the, the thinking with others. If, I, if it's so quick and we just have to respond, that's not the ideal position, but sometimes that's the reality. But at least if I've got two or three others that have just double checked it, made sure that everything reads okay and is actually representative of a collective view, all good. Um, but I also have to be really clear of uh, what is it that, again, I'm trying to represent in the media and make sure that um, that I've been given approval and the OK. Because as a chair, you are only the mangai, you are the spokesperson, but you must, um, you must fairly represent the views of the people that you represent. Our stakeholders are the whole community, so we're appointed on a representative basis, and we deal with grantees, people who are applying for money for, from us. So it's really important for us to know what's happening in the community, to know who those organisations are, and then to be able to evaluate, make judgments about where we want to prioritise our funding. So our links to the community are actually fundamental to us existing and being here. Spending time and taking time to form good relationships with stakeholders, being sincere about that and open about what you're trying to achieve in those relationships. Do they add value? Um, we don't have liberty of time, so being really good with judgment and discernment when we're working with stakeholders. The content for these videos was created with the input of more than 30 experienced board chairs based on their experiences and what they wished they knew when they got their first chair role.